Madrasa students are often portrayed as the other and demonized. I wanted to speak to this misunderstanding through the life worlds of the ulama and the Darul Ulum. This is what much of my work and reflection is about, transcending the other. Access to Darul Ulum in Britain has not been easy. As for myself, having entered the secular academy, had I become a virus that could infect my hosts with foreign ways of thinking and being. Although my identity as an academic at a secular liberal university had the potential to other me, viruses also play an important role in breaking and restructuring cells in more productive ways. In Sufi thought, the barzakh denotes a place between paradise and hell, or this world and the next world. Could my liminal position as a barzakhian give birth to new ways of epistemic inquiry and sociality. My role as an imam at the time of my research and my imitation of teachers by participants who are also imams and the ethical and social meanings this radiated granted me access to undertake research. Imitation is a powerful social technology of becoming and belonging. Yusha Patel has produced a pioneering book on imitation in pre-modern Muslim intellectual thought based on the politically charged hadith, whoever imitates a people becomes one of them. Yet imitation can take on productive contours. For example, this hadith can be deployed by Muslims to expand the social boundaries of their spiritual communities. For example, Muslim scholars write of the positive potential of imitation. Shah Waliullah, for example, wrote that fasting is like imitating the angelic realm. Ibn Arabi before him envisioned fasting as a way to imitate God's self-sufficiency. For them and for my teachers, the Imam is a preeminent object of ethical imitation. The congregational prayer symbolizes transcendence of difference with social inclusion at its heart, where hermaphrodites, for example, are granted a space to pray. This ritual act, though an individual obligation to God, also emphasizes a horizontal form of inclusion and ethical philosophy in and among others. Alongside being what I would term an imitatio imam, I maintained a sociality of companionship, what we say or refer to as suhbah, with my teachers. One must fully embody prophetic guidance through pious others to intuit its wisdom. What our project on researching imams in Britain and what madrasas expect their graduates to embody is a selfless service, khidmah to society, since a virtue-based society will be led and populated by those who have also perfected their own characters. Imams ought to be the most visible embodiment of this vision. It was this imitation of fellow imams and the ethical meaning it embodied, I argue, that inscribed sameness on my identity in researching a madrasa in Britain. My experience of access and research speaks to a broader conversation about living with others and the Sharia as embodying a socially based moral system of values that can play a role in engaging and living with others. The Prophet, for example, deftly produced an imitative art form. For example, the wedding sermon, what's known as the khutbah, in pre-Islamic society was a site for public showboating. Yet it served a positive function of publicly announcing the coming together of two people. In other words, it served a beneficial civilizational purpose, what's known as maslah. The prophets then imitated a practice while coloring it with a theological moral hue by emphasizing an awareness of God, the supreme other, over and above oneself. And in doing so, kept the original act while changing its negative attribute into a positive one. Both the spiritual and legal tradition of Islam, then, provide a reservoir 
to replenish ways of living where Muslim political theology is no longer the de facto state of affairs. The Islamic tradition carries a humanistic impulse. The emphasis on ethical living, that is everyone living as imams in a social moral sense, transcends the destructive distrust pervading society. In Sufism, one seeks to erase the facile border between the self and the other. Once erased, sameness turns enmity into amity. It is this very social suhbah of living with others ethically while being theologically rooted that paves the way for a productive imagining of Muslim difference with others today. Thank you for listening.